for you to return. May everything go nominally. Best of luck to everyone. Best of luck. friends. And of course, with the well-wishers uh, bidding farewell to the crew, the buses left for that 40-minute ride out to the integration and suit-up facility at Building 254 inside the Baikonur Cosmodrome. After arriving at the integration building, each of the crew members underwent uh, final medical exams and they suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits. And as you can see, uh, the crew members moved to a mock-up of a Soyuz spacecraft seat, allowing technicians to conduct pressure checks, ensuring that the suits were free of any leaks. Good view of Tracy Dyson there, having her suit undergo its pressure check. Novitsky on the left, Vasilevskaya on the right. usual, separated by a pane of glass to maintain quarantine, all of the family members and uh, invited guests waving to the crew as they underwent their pressure checks. Next up for the pressure check on her suit, Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus, flying under an intergovernmental agreement between Roscosmos and Belarus. And her 12-day mission on the International Space Station uh, will involve her conducting experiments for Belarus researchers. Dyson uh, talking to her husband, uh, there's the two members of the backup crew, Anastasia Lenkova and Ivan Wagner. Bring the mic a little closer. I've got a look few layers on my ears I can't hear. You want me to do that all over again, the speech? No, no, uh, no I, 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 I can. We love you. I can live free. <laughs> love you too. Thank you for being here. You've worked so hard for this day, Tracy, and we're just so proud of you and your whole crew and everything that you do for international cooperation aboard our space station and keeping the human presence going and the exploration. You're Don't make us, me cry. Nope, nope. <laughs> You're taking us all with you, and you know that. And love you. Thank you. Love you, too. Yeah. Trisha Mack, who was the director of human spaceflight in Russia for several years. That's oh, no, coming up. Oh, after this. I think after this. 
a little crowded in there. <laughs> Novitsky about to embark on the fourth flight into space in his career, already having logged 531 days in space. Just make sure you're okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I've got two, two really good friends flying with me that are going to make sure of that. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. So Thanks for being that. here, Norm. So Appreciate proud of you. Thank you. Marina, hello. It's a big honor for me and a big responsibility to be in this unbelievable mission. This is our national project. It's such a big honor. I'm so proud to represent our republic. I am so proud that we have this project. Dear daughter, all of Belarus is supporting you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you, Lukashenko, for organizing this project, for creating it. So many words have already been said, so many good words. I am so glad that we're in a great mood. We woke up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to go. And we are with you in spirit. We are holding you in our thoughts. We'll be in touch. We'll be talking in the morning, in the evening. We are absolutely certain that everything will be good. We are absolutely with you all the way. Thank you so much. We'll be back and we'll see each other soon. We'll be waiting for you. Thank you. And last up, uh, following his uh, suit leak check, Oleg Novitsky, the Soyuz commander. Speech. Everything will be good. Everything will be good. We want to wish you a good flight, a great expedition. I hope that you will be able to perform all of the tasks that have been said before you. And despite all the turbulence, we maintain our international space collaboration and we are aiming to continuing our international collaboration into the future, including up and including 2028. Please uh, be sure to keep an eye on Oleg, uh, Marina. Make sure that he presses all the right buttons. Oh, you got it. On behalf of the head of our government, the president, and everyone in the leadership, I want to send you their hellos, their support from the government of Belarus. We wish you a most successful flight and we are so excited to see you back here on earth when you come back support those who are there on board you are arriving there for a short time Oleg you know how it goes uh, don't make too much of a mess but uh, please support the crew members that are there for a long time all the best of luck to you and come back safely Thank you so much. Thank you. Crew members uh, then left the Site-254 integration building, allowing uh, Novitsky, the Soyuz commander, to report that he and his crewmates were ready to proceed to the launch pad. You'll see in a moment that the trio boarded their bus. That was about at 4.20 a.m. Central Time. 2.20 p.m. in Baikonur for the ride to launch site 31, a trip that took about an hour to complete. Best of luck to everyone. 
chanting Belarus. Goodbye and see you soon. Everything's gonna be great. Have a safe and joyful flight. And here is uh, the bus with the prime crew of Novitsky, Dyson, and Vasilevskaya arriving at uh, pad uh, six at site 31 at the Cosmodrome. You'll see in a moment that the crew climbed a few stairs and waved goodbye to well-wishers and photographers at the pad, after which they entered the elevator for the ride to the top of the Soyuz rocket to enter their spacecraft, which they have now been aboard for the past two hours. And you see Tracy Dyson accompanied there by Ken Bowersox, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations. There's the crew climbing the stairs. Don't get too lonely up there. And we are back uh, live with the countdown clocks ticking backward now at T minus 13 minutes and counting. Novitsky just reported back from uh, inside the Soyuz that uh, the crew is feeling great and ready for launch. At the time of launch, the International Space Station will be flying over southwestern Kazakhstan at an altitude of about 262 statute miles. The station will pass over the Baikonur Cosmodrome 36 seconds after Soyuz lifts off and will leapfrog past the Soyuz as Novitsky, Vasilevskaya, and Dyson climb to their preliminary orbit. Eight minutes and 46 seconds after launch, the third stage engine of the Soyuz booster will shut down and the Soyuz will separate from its launch vehicle in its preliminary orbit, deploying its solar arrays and its navigational antennas. At that point, the three Soyuz crew members will trail the space station by 1,740 miles, and the chase will begin. This will result in docking to the Prashal node module later today on the Earth-facing side of the station's Russian segment at 11.39 a.m. Central Time, 12.39 p.m. Eastern Time. At the launch site on the steppe of Kazakhstan, NASA officials are on hand to watch the beginning of the journey for Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya. Leading the NASA delegation on hand for today's launch is NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free. 
NASA's Associate Administrator, Jim uh, for Space Operations, Ken Bowersox, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director, Steve Kerner, Norm Knight, Johnson Space Center's Director of Flight Operations, and NASA's Chief Astronaut, Joe Acaba. And with them in Baikonur is NASA Public Affairs Officer, Leah Cheshire, who filed this report a short time ago. Hi, Rob. We're here at the launch viewing site at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. It's sand as far as the eye can see, except for the star of the show tonight, which is the Soyuz rocket atop Pad 31, just about two miles away from us. This evening, we're hitting temperatures around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, along with some winds, but nothing stopping teams from being ready to launch. It was sunny skies for the NASA delegation on the Roscosmos Charter when we arrived in Baikonur on Sunday. And then rocket rollout on Tuesday was chilly, with temperatures hovering around the freezing point. Rollout was smooth sailing starting at 7.30 a.m. local time. Now the crew are all suited up and seated inside the capsule. NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson is no stranger to launch, with this being her third space flight. And Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky is also well prepared for his fourth. And as we know, it's the first launch of spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya of Belarus. Some of Tracy Dyson's family is here supporting and cheering her on, and the NASA group can't wait to see her on the space station. So we are looking forward to liftoff and seeing Soyuz take to the skies. And with that, I will send it back to you, Rob. Thank you, Leah. We're at the T-minus 9-minute, 35-second mark. Launch readiness has been confirmed. The crew has been told to close their visors. Helmets are now closed. Everything is in readiness. all three crew members. At the, about the T-minus 7-minute mark into the countdown, uh, the Soyuz booster will be declared ready for launch. Telemetry will be received from the rocket, indicating that all primary and backup systems are set to support liftoff. Again, you're hearing music being piped up to the crew as we are inside T-minus nine minutes and counting. Again, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be over southwestern uh, Kazakhstan and will pass directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome 36 seconds after launch. The uh, launch is precisely timed for the moment when the Earth's rotation will place the Baikonur Cosmodrome into the plane or corridor of the orbit of the space station, which is inclined to 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. And a view of Tracy Dyson inside uh, the descent module of the uh, Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft, adjusting her straps getting ready for launch less than eight minutes from now, about to embark on the third mission of her career to the International Space Station. Again, Dyson first flew on the Space Shuttle Endeavour in 2007 on an assembly mission to the station, and then uh, three years later in 2010 as part of the Expedition 23 and 24 crews, now she'll be part of Expedition 70 and 71. Suspect 16-3, one minute readiness, everything is on schedule, control is on board. Uh, the launch uh, will be broadcasted, copy all, and everything is okay on board. We are ready for launch. You heard the report uh, from the blockhouse in Baikonur to Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky as we are inside seven minutes now till launch. All is in good shape. 
No issues being reported from the blockhouse in Baikonur. It is solid overcast at the launch site, so we likely will not see the rocket for very long off the pad, but we hope uh, to receive interior views of the crew at least for the first couple of minutes before the cameras will switch to a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz booster for the climb uphill. And uh, from another camera inside the descent module, you see Oleg Novitsky on the left and Marina Vasilevskaya on the right as they uh, continue uh, to move through their procedures in the final minutes of the countdown. We're inside six minutes now till launch. At this point, the launch key has been inserted in the launch bunker. This is a real key that transitions an automated launch sequence for the remaining minutes of the countdown. Coming up on the T-minus five-minute mark. Again, this is one of two launches today to the International Space Station. Standing uh, in the wings, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket at pad 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, ready to launch at 3.55 p.m. Central Time, 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time on a commercial resupply mission to deliver some three tons of supplies and science to the International Outpost, its arrival scheduled for Saturday morning. The uh, launch control center at the blockhouse reports that the range is clear, Soyuz is ready to begin its journey. In about 20 seconds, uh, we'll begin the uh, purging of the fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines with nitrogen that fireproofs them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Aboard the International Space Station, the crew has been informed by Mission Control here in Houston uh, that everything is go for launch three and a half minutes from now. The new uh, crew members to arrive at the station just a few hours from now will be uh, standing by for the arrival of the Soyuz with an expected docking at 11.39 a.m. Central Time, 12.39 p.m. Eastern Time. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds. The booster's fuel tanks are now being pressurized for flight. This will optimize the flow of fuel, helping to add structural support for the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Oxidize our fuel drain confirmed. Copy your report to Department 1. A booster propellant tank pressurization is initiated. Confirmed. Coming up on the T-minus two-minute mark. T-minus two minutes and counting. We have accepted the report, Department 1.
A few seconds from now, the ground propellant feed will be terminated and the Soyuz will go on internal power. T minus 90 seconds. Coming up on one minute, the first of those two umbilicals that you see on the side of the Soyuz will retract at about the T-minus 30-second mark. And that first umbilical now retracting. The second will retract at about the T-minus 15 second mark, initiating engine sequence start. Confirmed. Department 1 has received the report. T-minus 20 seconds. Auto sequence, Auto sequence initiated. Auto sequence initiated. Command has been issued. Attention. Attention on the launch. Automatic abort of launch has gone through. Prepare to stand down for 24 hours. Copy. Department 30, copy. Department 10 is copy. And the launch has been aborted. Department no launch. The countdown uh, made it to the final 20 seconds, and then the command was issued to abort the launch. We do not know the reason for that at this point. Standing by for further word, the vehicle is in a safe configuration. The Soyuz launch to the space station has been aborted. Depending on the nature of the abort, uh, the next opportunity would not be until Saturday for a launch for the Soyuz, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Once again, the countdown was proceeding flawlessly until about the T minus 20 second mark. And for reasons yet to be determined, the automatic uh, abort wa was issued to stop the countdown. Soyuz had a 10 second window in which to get off the pad, so there will be no launch of Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya today. With the Soyuz launch having been aborted, we'll be standing by also for further word on what impact, if any, this might have on the uh, Falcon 9 launch of the commercial resupply mission later today of the SpaceX Dragon.
To recap, uh, the launch of Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya on Soyuz MS-25 has been aborted. The abort command, which is an automatic command, uh, was issued at about the T-minus 20-second mark. Everything in the countdown has proceeded normally. The crew is perfectly safe atop the Soyuz. The uh, fueling and replenish uh, process has been uh, terminated for the day while engineers in Baikonur will assess uh, a potential reason for today's abort and a forward path. Fifth to the fiftieth, ready to activate system. Go ahead for station. Hey Matt, you've got Costa here. We want to give you guys a status. Um, our Soyuz launch was commanded, aborted about T minus twenty seconds. Uh, crew safe, everyone safe on the pad. We're standing by for more info, and we'll get you what we have when we have it. So as you guys know, that means it's going to be a few days before you guys see some visitors up there. Copies reported. Most importantly, station copies. Crew are safe. This is Mission Control Houston. To recap, today's launch of Soyuz MS-25 was aborted at about the T-minus 20-second mark. The retraction of the second umbilical buttressed up along the side of the Soyuz 2.1A booster occurred, but there was no initiation of the engine sequence start that is typically expected at that point. And the automatic command to abort the countdown was issued stopping today's launch. There are engineers already at the launch pad to assess uh, what may have triggered uh, today's abort. It is not known yet what the cause was. The crew is safe on top of the Soyuz vehicle. Work uh, will begin to uh, get that crew back out of the uh, Soyuz and back to their Cosmonaut Hotel crew quarters a short time from now. The next opportunity, pending a resolution of what uh, forced the abort today, would be Saturday morning. But it is not known whether or not uh, the issue that caused today's abort would permit a launch quite that early. We're going to just stand by and wait to see what uh, the engineers at Baikonur and uh, Roscosmos determine. If they are able to launch Saturday morning, it would put docking to the space station on Monday morning. Two 
to the 60th. Deactivate the SAS Soyuz launch escape system. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. As you can see, uh, continuing to receive uh, video from the launch pad uh, 6, Site 31. Launch escape system has been deactivated. Copy your report. Ready to activate system. Inaudible. Copy your report. Once again, you're hearing uh, communications between uh, the blockhouse in Baikonur and the crew in the descent module atop the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Today's launch to the International Space Station was aborted at the T minus 20 second mark. Copy, this is in work. An automatic abort command after the second of the two umbilicals, uh, which are basically service towers up against the side of the Soyuz rocket. The second of those two umbilicals, uh, once retracted, initiates a uh, engine sequence start. That never occurred. We do not know the reason why at this point. The crew on board the International Space Station was informed by Mission Control a short time ago that the launch had been aborted. So no visitors to the International Space Station today. The next opportunity to launch, pending a resolution of what happened today, would be Saturday morning. And we don't know the impact yet on whether or not uh, this will have any impact on the launch of CRS-30, the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch of the resupply mission to the station that is scheduled for this afternoon from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station with a docking to the station scheduled for Saturday morning. To Department Ton, pull out the servicing cabin from the launch table shelter and also lift back up the servicing towers. Copy both, lifting up the servicing towers. The uh, service towers, uh, those two gantry arms uh, that you see uh, lying horizontal on either side of the Soyuz booster uh, will be raised again. That will permit uh, engineers to have access to the crew to begin the process of extracting them and uh, getting them back to their crew quarters while we await further information on what may have caused today's launch abort. Again, the crew is perfectly safe. Uh, the vehicle is safe. Uh, all uh, fueling operations have ceased. All safety uh, commands uh, have been provided on board the rocket, so there's no danger to the crew. They're perfectly safe. As uh, work uh, will begin shortly to extract the crew from the Soyuz uh, MS-25 spacecraft. No launch today. No arrival at the space station, the next earliest opportunity pending a resolution of what might have triggered today's launch aboard would be Saturday morning.
And uh, as we approach sunset of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, the gantry arms are beginning to be raised following today's abort that occurred just 20 seconds before liftoff as we stand by for more information from the launch site on what might have caused uh, today's launch postponement. So once again, the uh, gantry arms are being raised uh, to be uh, enveloping uh, the Soyuz MS-25, which is currently venting uh, liquid oxygen out of its fuel tanks. The crew is safe on board, the abort occurring at the T minus 20 second mark. We will await uh, official word. The preliminary word is that the uh, Falcon 9 launch of the CRS-30 resupply mission to the station uh, will likely proceed as planned today with a docking scheduled on Saturday morning to the International Space Station. Well, then uh, SAS launch escape system is off. Uh, may we now uh, open our visors once the towers are in place. Only then you will be able to do that. Okay, copy. This is Mission Control Houston. With the crew safe uh, aboard uh, the Soyuz MS-25, uh, you continue to watch uh, the gantry arms being folded around the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster. Just to recap, 
the launch of uh, Tracy Dyson, Oleg Novitsky, and Marina Vasilevskaya to the International Space Station today was aborted at the T-minus 22nd mark. No reason has yet been given for the abort, so we will have to wait and see uh, what information uh, is provided to us later today from Roscosmos and from Energia engineers, both in Baikonur and at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. For now, we're going to uh, wrap up our coverage of uh, what had hoped to have been the launch of uh, Dyson, Novitsky, and Vasilevskaya to the station. And again, uh, we'll provide additional information on uh, the web at nasa.gov slash station and on the space station blog as soon as that information is available. For now, the crew is safe on board Soyuz MS-25. Work will now begin to extract the crew from the spacecraft and get them back to their crew quarters at the Cosmonaut Hotel. For now, this is Mission Control Houston. Good morning and thank you for joining us. We're live here in Mission Control Houston, the International Space Station Flight Control Room at Johnson Space Center in Texas. We're going to be sending some state commands. The departure of Crew 7 this morning comes just about a week after the arrival of Crew 8 to the International Space Station, bringing four new crew members. So over the last week, we've had a total of 11 astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the International Space Station. The departure today will bring it back down to the seven crew members we typically keep aboard. Uh, touch temperature LED is green. We got the green. And with that little bit of communication, we just heard that the hatch inside Dragon Endurance is now closed. All four returning crew members, uh, they're getting your first view inside the spacecraft this morning. They are now inside. Looks like Andy Mogensen there. He has been serving as the commander of the International Space Station. And yesterday, the uh, that was handed over to Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko. Currently aboard the International Space Station, we have Commander Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos, along with Nikolai Chub, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara, NASA astronaut Matt Dominic, NASA astronaut Mike Fink, NASA astronaut Jeanette Epps, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grebyankin. Undock sequence commanded. And we did just hear that call up to the crew that the undock sequence has begun. Umbilicals are demated, nominal.
and we are hearing that the umbilicals have retracted between Dragon and the International Space Station. So the next milestone that we'll be looking for is for those sets of hooks to uh, fully retract. There's two sets of six hooks, so 12 hooks in all. And once those hooks um, have separated, then there will be a short thruster firing that occurs of the Draco engines to help push Dragon back away from the International Space Station. Before they depart the International Space Station, let's take a moment to get to know the crew we're bringing home tomorrow. Lieutenant Colonel Jasmine Mogbelli hails from Baldwin, New York, and earned a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and a master's degree in aerospace engineering from the Naval Postgraduate School. She also graduated with honors from the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School as an AH. 1W Super Cobra pilot and Marine Corps test pilot, she has flown more than 150 combat missions. Um, in all, she has accrued 2,000 hours of flight time in more than 25 different aircraft. At the time of her selection as an astronaut, Mogbelli was testing H-1 helicopters and serving as the quality assurance and avionics officer for VMX-1. She's also the proud mom of twin girls. With this mission, she will have logged an estimated 199 days in space during her first flight, including six hours and 42 minutes during her first spacewalk. Today, she is the commander of Crew 7. Sitting next to Jasmine is pilot Andreas Mogesen. This is Mogesen's second trip to the space station. His first was as the flight engineer for the ESA IRIS mission in 2015. He was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, and graduated with an international baccalaureate from the Copenhagen International School, a master's degree in aeronautical engineering from Imperial College London, and a doctorate in aerospace engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. In 2015, Mogesen became the first Danish person to go to space and currently is serving as the European astronaut liaison officer to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. With this mission, he will have logged 209 days in space across two flights. In the role of mission specialist is Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. Furukawa's was interest in space began when he was just five years old and saw the Apollo 11 moon landing on TV. Furukawa was also a fan of the Japanese TV space hero Ultra 7. His professional career began as a medical doctor, but after seeing a news report about Japan auditioning for new astronauts to do science experiments on the space station, he decided to apply. He was selected by the National Space Development Agency of Japan to be an astronaut candidate in 1999, and his first mission to the space station was as flight engineer for Expedition 28 and 29 that launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in June 2011. Following this mission, he will have logged 366 days in space across his two trips. And to round it out, mission specialist Konstantin Borisov was selected to be a cosmonaut in 2018, and this was his first trip to space. He has a Bachelor of Economics from the Russian Academy of Economics, a Master of Science and Operations Research and Systems Analysis from Warwick University in Coventry, UK, and a Master in Aircraft Life Support Systems from the Moscow Aviation Institute. He has worked for companies such as Volvo and the Boston Consulting Group. He's also an experienced free diving instructor and an international free diving judge. He will end this mission logging 199 days in space. Thanks, Sandra. We just heard that separation is confirmed. The International Space Station and Dragon flying 261 statute miles over Hawaii at three at 10.20 a.m. Central Time, 11.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Just received confirmation of a nominal depart, depart zero, zero burn. burn. Is complete and nominal. Depart zero burn being a very short burn using uh, the service section Draco thrusters to break some stiction from Dragon and the International Space Station officially marking its departure. We are standing by for depart burn one, which will increase the opening rate between the spacecraft and the station. Again, at this time, the crew are all suited up and in their seats. They'll have an opportunity to get out of those suits shortly and prepare for their longer ride home. Standing by for confirmation that the depart burn one has begun. And we did hear that that burn has begun. 
Again, this burn is only 22 seconds long, so it's a pretty short burn. And Dragon, SpaceX, depart burn one is complete and nominal. As a reminder, we will be deactivating the big loop following the approach ellipsoid exit. Hey, Dragon, copy, depart one burn is complete. And uh, station from Dragon, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, for those staying on board on Expedition 71, we hope it does filled with laughter and fulfilling science as ours was. For Laurel, we'll see you in a couple weeks, and uh, we left you some peanut butter and tortillas in Node 1. And on board Dragon, the crew is going to begin to work on getting out of their spacesuits uh, for the journey ahead. Uh, they are splashing down early tomorrow morning, so they're going to get comfortable. They do wear those spacesuits during some of the more dynamic phases of the mission, such as launch, um, as well as docking and undocking, and of course, splash down. Uh, but now that they have successfully undocked from the International Space Station at 820 Pacific, about 12 and a half minutes ago, they are able to get out of those spacesuits get comfortable, uh, maybe have a meal, and just enjoy their last few hours in orbit. Crew 7 was the first crew in which all four seats were occupied by a member of a different nationality or a different partner country. Jasmine Mugbelli is our NASA astronaut aboard, joined by Andreas Mogensen of ESA, the European Space Agency. Satoshi Furukawa is from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, and Konstantin Borisov comes to us from Roscosmos. It was the first flight for Jasmine and Konstantin, and the second flight for both Andreas and Satoshi. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground. Uh, you have a go for your preparations for crew off duty at your discretion. We're ready to support in case you'd like to talk to surgeon. And uh, a reminder to set your audio destinations to ground. Dragon on Dragon to ground, uh, we copy all, and now we're going to configure for crew off duty. Good repack, Dragon. And those words from the ground up to NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, letting them know that now that they're out of the approach ellipsoid, they can get configured for a crew off duty period as they uh, wait splash down early tomorrow morning. The crew is going to get out of their spacesuits and get comfortable for the remainder of their journey. So again, the crew is now out of the approach ellipsoid, which means that the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours. Again, even if it lost all maneuvering and we call that a safe free drift trajectory. And with that, now that NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli, ESA astronaut Andy Mogison, JAXA astronaut Satoshi Furukawa, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov have departed the International Space Station, it will take them about 18 and a half hours until they make their way back down to Earth. The crew is currently doffing their spacesuits, or they may have actually uh, completely gotten out of their spacesuits to settle in for the flight home. And today, Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida at 5.50 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning or 2.50 a.m. Pacific time on March 12th, followed by the crew getting picked up by sea by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. As they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to Earth for Dragon and our Crew 7 astronauts. And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up for this morning, we will turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-7 mission. Our friends at the Johnson Space Center will provide continuous live audio-only coverage along Crew-7's journey home until we rejoin from Hawthorne approximately one hour prior to splashdown. You can find the audio-only link by visiting nasa.gov slash live and clicking the mission audio link or searching for NASA mission audio live feed on YouTube at go.nasa.gov slash live ISS. Meanwhile, we will rejoin for live visual coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on X at, at NASA at SpaceX and on the web at nasa.gov. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Dragon Endurance departed the International Space Station at 8.20 a.m. Pacific Time Monday morning.